So in this video, we're going to discuss the cardiac action potential of cardiac pacemaker cells. The pacemaker potential is seen in cells of the cardiac excitatory system, namely the cells of the sinoatrial node. Action potentials of cardiac pacemaker myocytes have three phases. So if we start with phase four, there is spontaneous depolarization and sodium moves into myocytes via leaky voltage-gated channels that open when the cell membrane potential becomes more negative. So this happens immediately after the end of the previous action potential. Phase zero. This occurs once the threshold potential of approximately minus 40 millivolts has been reached. We now get rapid depolarization and calcium entering the cell via L-type calcium channels. Phase three, repolarization occurs as potassium permeability increases, resulting in potassium efflux. Compared to contractile myocytes, pacemaker myocyte action potentials are slow response, have a less negative phase four membrane potential, have a less negative threshold potential, and have a less steep slope of rapid depolarization. So now to explain what happens to the cardiac action potential of pacemaker cells when there is an activation of the sympathetic nervous system and when there is an activation of the parasympathetic nervous system. So this here is a normal trace of the cardiac action potential of pacemaker cell when there is a balance of parasympathetic and sympathetic input. However, when there is overriding sympathetic stimulation, the gradient of phase four increases like so. This happens because when beta one adrenal receptors within the heart are activated, this results in an increase in cyclic AMP, allowing the opening of more calcium channels. If we compare this to when there is parasympathetic stimulation of the heart, the gradient or slope of phase four will decrease. This occurs because the vagus nerve acts to slow the discharge rate by hyperpolarizing the cell membrane through increased permeability to potassium. The membrane potential is therefore more negative, so it will take longer to reach threshold potential and to discharge. So in simplistic terms, as we can see from this diagram, when there is sympathetic stimulation, we have a relative tachycardia, compared when there is a parasympathetic stimulation, a relative bradycardia. Thank you for watching.